Hey everybody, it's time for my Q&A video. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while. I've seen some people do some really fun Snapchat Q&As and several of you have said you should do that too because I'm very active on Snapchat these days. And so I'm gonna do that. I also wanted to open this Q&A up to all of my social media. So I've got questions from Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. And I'm just going to, I guess, turn the volume on my phone way up. Thank you so much. Um, my favorite drugstore mascara, I got the drawer handy here, it's the uh, CoverGirl Super Sizer right now. This is the one that I am using all the time. I need to repurchase it. I think it gives great length to my lashes. Anytime you see me like not wearing false lashes and I just want to throw on mascara, this is what I want to use because it gives like the best just length, definition, makes me look like I have a lot of lashes. So this has been a real game changer for me. I really like it and I have a full review on it if you're interested. If you had to choose one drugstore brand to use your entire life, what would it be and why? Oh, that's always such a hard, hard question because I cannot confine myself to one brand. Ooh. It's too early for this kind of question. <laughs> I'm thinking of a brand that has just the most vast amount of products and that's always coming out with new things. So there would constantly be variety and you wouldn't get bored. Um, and I guess I would have to go with NYX off the top of my head here because I know they've got a lot of things that I do love and there's just so much to choose from. So if I had to just stick with one brand, it would have to be a brand like that that just has so much going on. Thank you so much. Um, that's super sweet and that has been a question I've gotten a lot. Not necessarily that I'm doing a good job with it, but just like, you know, asking about what life has been like with all of these different elements. And honestly, it's been tricky. It's definitely not the kind of thing where, you know, the more you think about it during your pregnancy or the more you make little plans for yourself once the baby comes, then everything will be smooth sailing. It's just not. Baby comes into the picture and it's like God's just laughing at your plans right there. And as someone who has gone many years in their marriage without having a baby, you can get kind of set in your ways. And also now a couple years away from a traditional job. You know, I've been here making my own schedule, doing things exactly the way I wanted to do them, and really being able to get into a routine. And it was almost kind of hard to let go of that feeling mentally, even after having the baby. It was like, I still, part of me thought, well, I should still be able to, you know, do my work during the nine to five period, you know? And it just wasn't happening. Do you like my tuft, by the way, that just wants to, why? Every video. There's no template that's going to just work well for everyone, but I can tell you what has worked for me is to work on video stuff early in the morning. Um, she tends to go back down for a nap like after her very first feeding around you know six o'clock in the morning or so between five and six she'll have that and then go back down to sleep for a, sometimes a good long while and so I'm able to shoot videos during that time while Tyler's still here so he's kind of on hand if she gets up. Um, I find myself doing a lot of editing after she goes to bed at night and I also do a lot of video shooting on the weekends too. So so we don't have anybody extra coming in here like nannies and sitters and things like that so it really is on Tyler and I to, to juggle this and make it work. And sometimes she'll take a big long nap like midway through the day and that'll give me some time to do some editing. But really like while she's up and especially now like she's walking and she's getting into everything, like I can't be thinking I'm going to have some big chunk of time during the day when I can do video related work. So while working at home with a baby is hard, you do have that ability, fortunately, you know, the flexibility with this kind of thing in YouTube to just let your duties kind of flow into those parts of the day where, you know, the baby is not taking center stage. Does it make for very long days? Yes. And do I feel absolutely exhausted at the end of most days? 
Absolutely. Sometimes I feel like my pillow could be a cement block and I'd still sleep. But one overall thing that does help me um, is having kind of a priority list. Not getting down on myself if certain things don't get done because I used to be a very like, use my planner and plan each day. But that just became frustrating with the baby because so many things were getting switched around or skipped or missed. And so I just kind of go by a big list and try to just knock off as many things as I can. And sometimes I get more done, some days I get less done. But what having that list does is kind of remind you of the tasks or the videos or the blogs or whatever it might be that you were hoping to do. And you can glance down at that because you won't always know when that child is gonna give you some spare moments in the day. So when you have them, you can jump to your list and actually have something kind of ready to bust out. Now that Belle is getting older and is walking now, does it make you want another baby? And by the way, I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so yeah, now she's walking. Do I want another baby? Um, well, now that she's walking, you really realize how difficult and exhausting things can be because she's just so curious. She's everywhere. She started climbing the stairs and she wants to do that like non-stop. And I feel like I've known even before having her that I've wanted her to have like a brother or sister, you know, maybe multiple, I don't know. I would love to have a family with several kids. That was definitely like the most frequently asked question out of anything. Are you gonna have another child? Do you and Tyler intend to have more kids? I am 31 years old so obviously I don't have forever or I can't be like putting massive gaps, you know, between them. Like, I'm not pregnant now, but it, it may not be a long, long time before another one comes around. I hope, God willing, you know? My question for you is, do you ever feel guilty or wasteful for owning so much makeup? And how do you plan on instilling in Belle that this isn't necessarily normal? Great question. Um, absolutely not. I do not feel guilty one bit. I make no apologies for the amount of makeup I have because it is what I do. It's how I make a living. You know, it, it funnels directly into reviews, tutorials, and just my whole education in makeup. The more makeup I try, the more educated I become in what I sit here and talk to you guys about. So being able to make comparisons, being able to compare a high-end to a drugstore item, and just, you know, even if you're trying things and you're not always talking about every little thing, I feel like I'm still taking in so much information and becoming more and more informed all the time. So I would definitely let Belle know that, you know, this is what mommy does for a living. This is not what everyone does. Not everyone's like daddy and needs to have a bunch of legal books. We've all got our craft and I think it's easy for people to look at, well, you have a lot of makeup and look at that in a critical or like in a very, you know, you're so materialistic way for having all of these things. But, you know, the purpose of all this, again, twofold. I'm contributing an income to this household and I'm contributing thoughtful, honest, well-informed reviews to the people who watch me. So that is what my big old collection has done for me and I feel not one regret about it. In fact, I feel great about it for what it has allowed me to do over the years. Okay, three things. Winged <laughs> eyeliner, false lashes, and color pop. Like, WTF, how do you make that crap work? Okay, winged liner, you may have seen this in some of my tutorials, but I love making like the little triangle in the outer corner. It's gonna be hard for me like sitting here right now to fully explain it, but you know, I like to draw straight out from like the top part of my eye out and then up from the lower lash line and then fill in that little triangle and that's usually what works for me. Um, false lashes, my false lashes 101 video covers like everything false lash related in super detail. So I hope that video helps you. Um, but really, I think glue is huge for false lashes. I think it can make or break the experience. So get Revlon Precision Lash Glue. It's great about not getting too much on the lash band. Let it get tacky. And um, use one of those false lash applicators like the one from BH Cosmetics. Or I just saw, I think Ardell is making one that looks very similar that I saw in CVS the other day. And then you mentioned color pop eyeshadows. One of the easiest ways to work with these is as the actual pop of color like on your lids. So if you've got a really shimmery, they do a lot of great like sparkly shades, pick them up with your finger and absolutely just pack them on and press them on your lids with your finger. And I've had really good luck with a lot of the shades I've had that way. Favorite thing about being a mom and the hardest part 
keeping up with you two since you've had your little princess? Oh, um, that was a question that I saw had been asked a lot on Instagram too. Um, my favorite thing about being a mom, um, I just had to speak those words and I feel like I'm going to get tears in my eyes now, but um, there is so much love in my heart. Like, I mean, I love Tyler, I love my family, and now I feel just unbelievably connected to this little human being. And I just, I love that. And the most fascinating thing is just seeing her um, just go through these different progressions and grow and learn new things and her curiosity and all that. And I know a lot of times you hear people saying like, time slow down, you know, because they're already walking or they're already doing this and that. And I mean, I, I get that because she's she's little and cute and it'd be fun if she was little and cute for a long, long time. But at the same time, like, I can't wait to have a conversation with this kid. What, you know, really learn what's going through your mind because she fascinates me. I think the other part of the question was about, like, um, maybe the most challenging part about keeping up with videos. And really, I think it's just the different kind of schedule overall. Like I had said before, you know, I'd gotten in a habit in kind of a swing of things with, um, basically working like nine to five type hours before on YouTube. And now everything I do kind of shifts into various parts of the day. And sometimes I get frustrated when I start a task and I can only get it like halfway done. And it's like, wait, I was just getting into that. And then something else happens over here. Becoming more flexible is probably the biggest thing. And I do feel like I'm getting better at that all the time, but I didn't start out as like a naturally super flexible, whatever happens happens. You know, that's not always been the way I am, especially with YouTube. It's like I, I want to do things how I want to do them. So letting go of some of that has been um, something I've been learning to do. So thank you so much to everybody who asked a question on Snapchat. There were many more that I, I know I couldn't get to for this video, but hopefully I can do this again sometime because that was really, really fun. I'm move on to some questions on other social media. Uh, Phoebe says she thinks it's great that I made a full-time career out of being a YouTuber. Um, but I would be freaked out about what the next move might be. Maybe YouTube will last forever, but if it ends or isn't a viable career option because policies change, what would you do? Um, well, that's a good question too. Um, and I really think that thinking about job security, really, that's a concern. I think could be a concern in any field. I mean, I just think back to the news and all the stories we've done on this plant closes, this business shuts down, these uh, federal or state jobs are being cut due to budget concerns. And, you know, there's just, when you really think about it, who knows exactly what's going to happen for the future of the job that they're working in. If YouTube goes, there, there's a good chance something's going to pop up in its place or, you know, maybe the medium changes, but, um, you know, if I've still got a message to put out there, there, I may look into another way of doing it, you know. From a financial standpoint, I mean, Tyler's offering an income to this household as well, so that's a comforting thing. And I do have a college education. I mean, if I wanted to do something totally different or take what I do on YouTube and, and form it into a different type of thing, I feel confident in my ability to do that. So no, I'm not worried about it. Ashley says, talk about your hair routine. You have long, beautiful hair. Really? Thank you. Um, what changes did you go through? through during your pregnancy? What hair changes did you go through? Oh man, it was, all right, during pregnancy, I felt like everything was pretty smooth sailing with my hair. Right after having her, things were kind of cool hair-wise. But I remember right around November, December, I started dealing with such oily hair. Like I've never had a scalp that was so oily and I didn't know what to do about it. And I was looking up like remedies. I had rinsed my hair with Listerine, like all these different things that I had found and, you know, used really, really clarifying shampoos. And I honestly think in that time, I may have even made the issue worse by um, stripping my hair so much. But really what I use is my Suave 2-in-1. It's the Almond Verbena. I've reviewed it on the Express channel. It's seriously like the cheapest thing ever, but it's two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. And I remember thinking maybe using that that has a little bit of replenishing quality with the conditioner built in may just like even out my whole oil control issue. And that has been the one thing that I've used and I felt like my hair ends up really clean. You know, it's back to slick, shiny, clean when I wash it again, but it's not too dry, not too oily. It's just right. So that's working out well, but I have lost a lot of hair and that kicked in, it seemed like after the six month 
Mark, you know, just losing a lot in the shower. So that was kind of crazy. And I guess I was losing it from all over because I never noticed like a, a patch of my head where, oh, there, all my hair's gone. I guess that's the good thing. I can tell like just pulling my hair up into a ponytail, you know, you yank it all back and it's like, I feel like my handful of hair isn't quite as big as it used to be, but I do notice now I'm in, you know, baby hair phase, so I've got a lot of little hairs sprucing up everywhere. Bridget on Twitter, what are some life lessons you want to teach your daughter? Um, kindness above everything. Making people feel important and helping other people is so important. Um, I feel like there will be such a temptation. People talk about, you know, spoiling a kid rotten and, you know, like wanting to give her everything. I feel like that temptation will be there just because she, she's your little girl and you just want her to have everything. But I think really instilling in her that she is not the center of the universe and that all the other people in the world are equally important and what can you do to be of service, to be of use, to, you know, let your light shine. This little light of mine. Like that song I think is everything in this world. You know, how can you take what God has given you, take your gifts and spread them? Valerie says, would you ever consider doing mommy awards monthly or as a part of the Emily Awards? I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, I think now, especially maybe this coming Emily Awards, I will have built up some ideas on what things have really worked well. That's a great idea. Um, what was the song you and Tyler had your first dance to as husband and wife? Uh, that That's from Erica Jones. Hi, Erica. It was Billy Currington's Must Be Doing something right. Must be doing something right. I just heard you sigh. We loved that song at that time. Like that was the song of that summer for us. So it just, it became our wedding dance song. <laughs> Tons of people asked on Instagram about missing the news or will I ever return to TV? I know I've said this before, but one of the biggest things I miss about the news would be the people I worked with. Because I, I feel like it's rare to go into a workplace and genuinely feel like the crew of people you have around around you, like you just love them. Like they're just all awesome. So that was the place I was at when, at the time I left the station. Like I really just so enjoyed everybody, still do. I say this now and they say, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him you're bland. You know, I've said that a zillion times, but I don't really see myself returning to a traditional workplace, especially after being in this work from myself, be my own boss mode for so long and now having a baby too. It's been my personal decision to want to be at home with her and I want to continue to do that and if there are more babies you know I feel like my role in the home is going to be um, even more important in that way but what I do with YouTube just allows me to be so flexible like I said I can take what I used to do in a relatively normal schedule and and really push it out to other parts of the day and that's just been handy and important for me but away from just you know those practical aspects Here's the thing, the ability to sit here and just talk about whatever I want, determine my content, I mean, that really, when I was on the news and my co-anchor Kevin and I, when we would have a moment where let's say the uh, teleprompter went down or we had a situation where it was breaking news or just an ability to kind of riff off of one another, you know, those were our strongest moments when it was just all the ad-libbing. And um, that was so fun. I really preferred that over being scripted, which a lot of the the news is scripted so this being able to sit here in front of my camera and just ad-lib at all times is great for me. Um, I also miss interviewing people though. Least glamorous moment of motherhood. Um, that first week right after having a baby like that was really down and dirty, not glamorous, not sleeping, uh, feeling dirty, wearing the same clothes over and over again. Like that was kind of rough. And that has repeated itself at various times throughout uh, her early, early childhood now. But um, also when you got the blowout diaper and so you got the messy diaper, you got to get that all cleaned up. And then there's a mess on the onesie and a mess on the changing pad. And you got like this baby partially dressed and you're running over to the laundry room with all the poopy stuff and it's just you know that's not a glamorous moment either. Favorite silly cute thing Belle does um, right now I love when she peeks around like she doesn't need anybody to start doing peekaboo with her she will just get the game going if she <laughs> that's what she wants to do so she'll be on the other side of a chair and she'll peek around and she gets this huge smile and I love that. Are you worried Belle will grow up thinking her name is Nook? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, her nickname, uh, honey, you don't even know the extent of her weird nicknames. Um, Berto, which started with Pooh Bear, and then we called her Puberto, and then Queen Berto, and all this craziness. I mean, the kids got nicknames. I grew up with a lot of weird nicknames too, and I still went to school knowing my name was Emily, and I knew what to like write on my papers or how to sign my checks, and you know, I, you figure it out. Nicknaming is just a big part of my family's life. Everybody's got a nickname. Describe the perfect plate of nachos, Lindsay Brooke Moss. Great question. Okay, you got your layer of chips. Um, I'm gonna go with some ground beef seasoned. I want some nacho cheese over that. I want several dollops of sour cream or guacamole. I will take either. Um, some pico de gallo all over the top of that for some tomatoey spice. And a sprinkling of black olives. That'd be perfect. What attracted you to Tyler? Um, I think the most outstanding thing about him and the most unique thing about him, it's important to know like Tyler is 6'6". He is a big tall guy and I'm just a little five foot tall thing. He has always had this, what I would call a quiet confidence about him. Um, even like back into high school where a lot of kids get defined by, you know, he was playing football, he was doing basketball, and I think kids kind of get their identity from a lot of the things they're involved in, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I think that is kind of what happens. And he was always so well liked, like people just kind of gravitated to him. Other guys just really wanted to be friends with him, and I think it was because he never ever came off as cocky or arrogant or anything and I think that's one of the most unattractive qualities in a guy is when they act like they're the shiz you know. I just always felt like he was really confident with just who he was and that's a very attractive quality. I think he has taken that with him throughout his whole life and I feel like he just attracts people to be his friend. Just such a down-to-earth like quality human being and I'm thinking like back to high school and college as I talk about this but if I would have known Known, like what an amazing dad he was gonna be. I mean I had my hunches over time but if I would have known what just an amazing father and husband this guy would be like I don't I, I would have been proposing to him I guess. Walk around bald for the rest of your life or never wear makeup? Um, walk around bald. Yeah, I, makeup has always taken priority over hair for me. Favorite emoji? Um, well, okay, there's the emoji I use a lot, which is like the pink heart, which I really like. And, you know, I use that often, but my favorite one is really the smiling poo. Because that's the one I will send to Bub, like, <laughs> if he if he's still in bed or something and I've been up, I will, like, text him multiple smiling poos. And it just makes his phone blow up and I think it's hilarious. And it's just, it's just funny. Any traditions with Belle? I feel like we have really developed in the past month or so a tradition in the evenings, like before I feed her, like in her high chair, her dinner there. Um, we go out to our swing. We've got this great swing kind of up on a hill in our backyard and it's it, kind of like porch swing style, but it's got its own little what is it, like a mini pergola type thing over it. I just love swinging out there with her and she is so all over the place these days and so energetic that that's one of the things where she can kind of sit back and chill and she's not sleeping, you know, she's totally awake and she can watch like cars go by and kids go by playing and she just really enjoys that. But it's like our moment to just chill and I find myself looking forward to that moment at the end of every day, you know, every nice day when we can go out there and do that and I feel like it's kind of become a little ritual. B. Mathis 86, fellow Southern Illinois girl, Waltz, Mackey's, or Quattro's. Those are all pizza places in this area. Um, I gotta go with Quattro's. I love me some deep dish. How do you discreetly breastfeed? What kinds of tops should I buy? Wear a like maybe a little bit looser fitting top and wear your nursing bra as well. The nursing bras are really handy because they just, you know, unsnap right there and you've still got a bra like hooked onto you, but the flap comes down and out comes the sustenance. So if you've got a bra like that that you can quickly work with and you're not fumbling with, the ones that I have liked best have actually come from Walmart. I gotten a couple from Target, they were okay, but my Walmart ones just for whatever reason I like the fit. But when you're wearing a looser top, as you can imagine, you know, you can lift it up without exposing your entire midsection, so that kind of gives you some coverage and then the bra part comes down and you can stay very covered up 
uh, feeding in that manner. Also, I just always keep in my diaper bag a lightweight, like receiving blanket or swaddling blanket type thing. The lighter the blanket, the better, because I've been in some hot, sticky outdoor situations. Belle doesn't love being covered up completely while she feeds, but I kind of, like if I'm holding her right here, I just toss it over my shoulder and I let a lot of her face still be, you know, out to the open. She doesn't like being totally covered up, but the actual boob and nipple area is all covered by that. And that can still be awkward, but you get quicker at it. And especially as she latches more effectively and stays latched on, like it does get easier. I, but I know it can feel very awkward starting out. Someone just woke up. Oh, <laughs> hi, how you doing? Speaking of the swing, look at this picture I took last night while we were on the swing. Look at that! This is gonna be the last question because I've been shooting this video for like literally an hour. <laughs> yes! B. Brennan says, and this was on Instagram, I remember you said no one ever needs makeup, but did you feel like you needed it when you had melasma? I'm asking because I've dealt with really bad acne while pregnant breastfeeding. I felt so ashamed it would not go anywhere without makeup. I'd feel so grateful if you answered this. And um, I totally get what you mean uh, by that because it's like you've got something where you feel like um, extra, extra different from your normal self, you know, and you just feel the need to cover it up. And I remembered feeling the need to cover up, like when I had my dark melasma type stripes on top of my skin, I did feel like uh, self-conscious about that and I felt the need to cover it up. I mean, obviously not to the extent that I wouldn't show myself without makeup on and you would fully see that in my YouTube tutorials. So, um, I mean, with you guys, I guess I've had a certain comfort level with showing that because it's makeup is what it's all about. But just out in public, I think that was a circumstance where I was wearing the makeup for other people. It was almost like I don't want them to have to wonder and ask about what they see on my face because it really stands out. So just to bypass that whole topic, let's just cover it up. You know, it's like that was just the easier thing to do. But I do think I just felt a little extra self-conscious with it and that's just the way it was. You know, I think we all have our things like that from time to time. But I cannot thank you guys enough for your fabulous questions, even more than I was able to answer in this session of answering questions questions. Um, I really enjoyed how insightful, how kind you were. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all later. Bye. You see cute bedhead. Oh, do you see yourself in that mirror? <laughs> love you, love you, love you, love you. <laughs> oh, are we popping? She loves being in this room. She loves all the things.